Mendoz for virtualsheetmusic.com. Uh, today I'd like to talk about uh, posture. Um, actually, posture is something that I know um, uh, is very important to all of you cellists. Uh, it certainly is important to me. And um, there are certain guidelines and rules I think that we should follow um, when we're even discussing you know, the idea of posture, uh, what it is to sit correctly at the instrument, what it is to hold the instrument correctly, and all those kinds of things. Um, now, just to start off with, with a kind of a general philosophical um, uh, uh, statement here on, on posture and what, what I think the whole thing is, I know that um, very com it's very common to think that posture is something that results in all sorts of other things. So, for example, a good posture can lead to good playing, or bad posture can lead to bad playing, and all those kinds of things. Um, I just feel like there's too many examples of players who play with bad posture but who sound really fantastic and, and vice versa. Players that play with very good posture but don't sound very good at all. There's too many cases of either or of that um, that uh, to, to really make that kind of statement that, that posture has that kind of influence. Um, uh, um, uh, to, to make a statement that posture has the kind of influence that we give it. You know, that, that we think that if we just sit correctly, if we do something like that correctly, that it means we're, magic gonna, we're magically going to be able to play better. Now, this does not mean that I think that there, any way to sit or any way to be at the instrument is okay. There are certain things that at least I've seen amongst many other players, um, uh, some of the really great players, uh, that indicate to me that there are certain basic rules that we should follow. And also every body is, is, is you know, every person's body is, is individual, obviously, and there's, there are many things in common, obviously, with human beings from one to another, but there are also some minor differences that can change how we all um, approach the instrument uh, to, to a slight degree. Uh, so the first thing we, we can talk about is actually just plain old sitting. Um, now, it seems strange that anybody should ever have to teach you to sit, you know, that's, that's a, it's a pretty basic thing. Um, and that's really where uh, my advice to you kind of comes from. I don't think anybody should have to show you how to sit. You really should sit when you're at the cello. You should sit as if you're not, there's no cello at all. So, you know, if you sit like how, you know, your, your parents uh, 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 told you, you know, maybe they yelled at you about this to have a, have a straight back. Well, so we should try to have a straight back and shoulders back as much as we can. Uh, this really helps to, to prevent lower back injuries. The more we hunch over this way the cello or we kind of bend our back, I know you can't really see it from that angle, but the more you kind of hunch over the instrument like that, the more problems you can have not only in your neck and your shoulders, but, but also in that lower back, which is always a very sensitive spot. Now, as far as what part of the chair to sit on, I'm a big advocate of sitting on the front edge of the chair. I think that this actually gets your knees in a position where they're below your hips. Now, that's not one of those hard and fast rules, but certainly for me, having the knees below the hips really helps to roll my hips forward instead of having them back. Now, if you've kind of, you kind of feel if you, if you roll your hips back this way, automatically your body goes into that that kind of that your back goes into that curved position, your shoulders start to hunch over like that. So that's why I feel like having the knees below the hips, I know you can't see that in the video, but they're they're definitely below the hips. Now another thing to promote that, that feeling of the knees being below the hips, is where you place your feet. Now you don't, I know you can't see my feet, and I can't really show you because you know I'm only one guy doing this here. Um, but the feet I actually advocate kind of more of a, a position that Starker I, I know used, uh, which is actually having the feet more underneath you. I know there's some people that teach the tripod, which I'm setting my feet out here, you can't really see it, um, but they teach the tripod where you have you know, your, your rear end in the chair and then you have your two feet out kind of in front of you like this flat on the ground. I think this is a problematic position. I think it actually throws your center of gravity, more of your center of gravity forward. And when you throw more of that center of gravity forward, in order to balance out, you want to kind of lean back with your body that way to kind of make sure that you're balanced out. So that's why I like to keep my feet in a position to where I could almost stand straight up. I know I disappeared there, but you could almost stand straight up right from where you're at and you wouldn't have to shift your, your body forward at all. Now, when we start to put the cello into this whole scenario, all we want to really do is make sure that we don't have to twist the body. 
at all in order to place the cello there. You see, with the cellos here, it's the same as if the cello was not there. I have not changed anything essential. I mean, maybe there's some slight little differences in how my body is tilted, but those are, I, I assure you those are very slight. So developing this kind of very comfortable position at the cello, I think, is really important. Now, again, like I said in the beginning, for everybody, that's going to be slightly different. You're going to have some that are, uh, uh, you know, maybe they like the end pin a little bit higher, and so maybe they're going to sit a little bit more, you know, like Rostropovich did, which was, he didn't see, sit on the edge of the chair, but he didn't put himself all the way back in the chair either. He did something kind of like this with his bent end pin, where he still was kind of feeling this way, more forward, and you can see him do it. You can never see him just kind of sloping, but you know, uh, not sloping, but I don't know what the word is, but kind of, uh, well, just relaxing in the back of the chair with the cello up here like this. He still is here, and you can see that, and he's, he's still kind of going forward. You can see this in videos of the great uh, uh, cellist uh, um, uh, Casals, uh, um, Emmanuel Foreman, uh, Leonard Rose, Leonard Rose, in fact, actually used quite a short um, end pin. Um, and, you know, so his body was very forward when he was playing. So th there are some variations, but basically that's the, uh, the basic idea, is you want the cello to be able to not really change how you're sitting. However you learned how to sit when you're a kid, that's how you should sit when you're sitting at the cello. Nothing different. Just you should be able to take it in and out like that. Now, uh, uh, one small detail here. As far as the legs are concerned, really I think it's important to make sure you're not gripping the cello with your legs. Uh, now, the effects of this are negligible, but they're enough that, 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 that you want to be aware of it. If you squeeze the cello, and you can just experiment with this, you can squeeze a cello and then play an open A. You probably won't be able to tell this on the video. But if you squeeze a cello with your knees, like I'm doing right now, and play an open A, and then you leave your knee all the way out here, and you play an open A, you can see immediately that there's much more ring. And mainly it's in the overtones and other things. So try this at home and, and, and see if this doesn't help you to kind of get a, a more ringing sound. And also it's overall just kind of less tightness in the body, which is a good thing. Uh, now let's talk about these shoulders, because very often as we're getting into the higher positions, you know, uh, in, in the thumb position, when we're up here, we end up doing this kind of thing with our shoulder because we get kind of nervous and worried, you know, oh, am I going to uh, play something in tune or something out of tune? Uh, well, really, this, this has more to do with really your kind of overall attitude towards those upper positions than it does anything else. And there I would kind of refer to you uh, probably to one of my other videos where I, I'm not sure if I talked about this or not, but really that the hand position should really stay the same no matter where you're at. You really shouldn't change. So for example, you're, if your elbow is too low, then as soon as you go into those upper positions, you're going to start to feel a little bit strange with the left hand. Things are going to feel radically different than they did before. Whereas if your elbow stays up the whole time, and this is something I advocate with all of my students, to find one position for the elbow, for all the notes like that, you'll be able to run up and down the instrument like crazy, and also big shifts, you know, going from the C to C or, or, you know, wherever from wherever, will become really easy because this part of the cello here won't be involved. And I know, I think I talked about that in a shifting video. Um, but anyway, that's, so that's part of the posture. The other part of the posture is, of course, the bow hold. You know, the posture has to include everything, not just the, the how we're, you know, how we're sitting at the cello, but how we're holding all the things. So you can look at any one of my, any one of my videos about the bow hold to kind of get some clues about that. Um, I think I covered everything I wanted to cover. I covered the, this left elbow, making sure this elbow stays up, making sure that we're not scrunching our shoulders when we're in the upper positions, but that the shoulders are in kind of a nice position, but, but of course this elbow is still in, in a good position as well. Um, uh, we talked about making sure that your feet are a little bit underneath you and not so far out this way to make sure that those hips are rolled forward to protect that lower back, to not hunch over the cello in any sort of way, and to just really remember that the basic rule for sitting is that you have to be able to take that cello in and out, in and out like that, and not change anything about how you're sitting. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. I can't wait to see some of your comments. You know, if any of you have been taught differently or anything like that, I'd, I'd love to hear it. I, I, I love taking as much information as I can from what other teachers do and sorting through it. And maybe some of it I like, some of it I don't, and that's okay. Uh, but uh, I, I love a good, healthy discussion about these things. So please leave your comments uh, down below there. Um, and uh, I'll answer them as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, once again, this has been Joseph Mendoz uh, for virtualsheetmusic.com. Thank you.